the, the management of, of imagery. That's true. Yeah. Well, you should be able to. You certainly ought to be able to. They manage everything else. And does that mean you want to have 100 photographers swarming over the coffins? No. Do you need to, can you get a pool together, a couple of people? You should be able to do that. That, but that gets directly back to what I'm talking about in terms of real First Amendment issues. It's all of the BS related to national security. Oh, well, it's okay. As long as we feel better about being guarded and being safe, then we, can, then we don't really care about the First Amendment. That's a bunch of crap. That's the threat to this country. It has nothing to do with... You can be shooting with a speed graphic or the new, newest Canon digital camera. It doesn't matter. What really matters is people who want you not to take pictures and for political reasons or perceived political reasons or just because they're freaking idiots, which we have way too many of them <laughs> these days who happen to be burly security guards. Um, you know, you drive over the George Washington Bridge, you know, you can't take a picture of that. I had a, an assignment last summer to photograph that was a terrorist plot that was written by a book that was uh, talked about in Time magazine. The writer had gotten information that there was a cell that was trying to figure out how to blow up the 42nd Street station. So they made this whole thing. They managed to get me clearance to photograph down the 42nd Street station. I'm down there with an assistant, kind of a goofy looking guy, okay, but smart enough that he probably would have taken the rental car back. <laughs> Two camera bags. A tripod, a speed graphic, which is about as big as a 1948 Nash, a bunch of film holders, and a light meter. If you're so freaking stupid that you think I'm a threat because I'm taking pictures, then you don't need to, you don't deserve to be protected by any amendment. Use your brain, people. Finally, somebody after went over and talked to the cops. Oh boy, that's really telling them. Jesus, I mean, if they want to take a picture, they're going to dress up in a uh, look like a grandma pushing a pram and have a camera in there. You know. But that's not what anybody get paid, gets paid to feel good about. So. It seems that in times of crisis we, we try to create rules to help us through the crisis and we lean on the road, those rules in ways that hurt things we take for, for granted without even knowing it, like saying you can't take pictures on a subway. As part of my job at the White House, I would go on trips with a small group of people to the countries where the president would be going, 20 in all, I think. So we dealt with the equivalent group of people in each of these countries. And their perceptions of what was and was not allowed for the media were just stunningly different. I mean, even to the point, they would say, wait a minute, you allow the public into the White House? Even I tried to take pictures of the Kenyan president's residence, and it was like this general who I know had killed people. <laughs> 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 sort of got heavy handed with me, and it was, I didn't, well, I took a few. <laughs> but it's really, you know, the First Amendment is. is From uh, my observation, uh, the past five years, I have never seen such a fierce attack upon the First Amendment in history. And uh, Dr. Dunleavy knows that I, I brought something to the class one, one day, and uh, I'm sure that everyone has seen this. It's a, it's a special tool that the government uses from time to time. And uh, I didn't bring it with me. I, I should have thought of that. But I call it the magic national security wand. And it makes even the First Amendment disappear. Yeah, there are, are well-intentioned people who try to restrict ass access on, um, on journalists and photographers who are trying to cover, um, say, a forest fire news event. Um, I'm thinking right now of the when the David Kim, I guess it's David Kim was stuck up in the uh, uh, I want to say Forest Service Road, it could be the BLM Road. But anyway, the um, the 
search parties, the state police, the sheriffs, or the, I guess it been Josephine County under sheriffs up there, they didn't really want journalists running up that road, getting lost, and having to look for them. So they used that as a, as a reason not to let, well, essentially us, just about anybody um, who's representing the media up into their camp to photograph the search and rescue crews. Uh, a lot of people kind of camped out around places where they would give media some, um, they'd have a sort of a media event and they would talk to the media specific times of the day and you could photograph that. But you couldn't actually go out and watch the searchers search.